This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, it is August 8th at 7.05 p.m. It's a Monday, and we've got a walk-in freezer that is not working properly. Um, judging by the temperature of the product, this thing has been down all day long. There is no ice whatsoever so uh, we need to jump up onto the roof and see what's going on up there I have a feeling this has been down for a very long time this is their walk-in cooler right here and this is their walk-in freezer now today was insanely hot for us had a heat wave come through it was about a hundred and probably eight hundred and ten somewhere in there so uh, let's look at the condenser doesn't look too dirty, but all right, well, let's jump into this and see what's going on. We can go through all the troubleshooting steps, but oftentimes on these guys, look at these condenser fan motors. That is a mess with all this wiring. What the heck? I don't know what someone was thinking there. That's a joke. Um, but there's a high pressure control that's a manual reset. Let's push it. There we go. Fired up. And let's let it run for a little bit and see if it comes down in temp. It could be a motor going bad, or it could just be a dirty condenser, I don't know. We'll have to test current on those motors too. Also, these high pressure controls, when it gets 110, 115, especially when they're old, this one is a 07. This equipment was manufactured in 07. The pressure controls tend to drift, um, and they don't, they're not as accurate anymore, so we do tend to see some nuisance trips every once in a while too. So we're gonna let this guy run for a while. I should probably go get some service gauges and gauge up on it and kind of see what's going on. This guy is actually not running that high a head pressure. For 404A, it's about 90 degrees outside. So, you know, roughly shouldn't be any more than 30 degrees over ambient as far as the head pressure goes. That's not how you charge the unit, but it's just a guideline. So, 100, 110, 120. It's not too bad, but we're gonna go ahead and clean the condenser because I can't see through it. Um, I need to get on those condenser fan motors. The other thing I wanna to do too, because I told you guys that oftentimes these pressure controls, this, this should be cutting out at 410 PSI for this guy right here, 410. So let's block off this condenser and see if we can drive up the head pressure and see where it shuts off at. If I can do this carefully. There we go. So let's go over here. You know, you don't want to do this a lot, but it's a good way to prove what the problem is. So we'll just watch it, get a roundabout as to where it shuts off at. 390. So, go ahead and shut the disconnect switch off. So like I said, they drift, they're not super accurate. So we're gonna need to change that pressure control. But what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna clean the condenser, we'll test the current on the condenser fan motors, make sure they're working right. I'm not gonna change the pressure control tonight because if I clean it sparkly clean um, with coil cleaner, we'll make it through the night and then I can come back tomorrow and put in a new high pressure control. Um, and then uh, you know finish going and that'll give me an opportunity to see the box come down to temp too so we're not going to try to reset it right now we're going to go ahead and wash the condenser because it needs a differential before you can reset it anyways so uh, we'll wash the condenser get it cleaned up and then uh, turn it back on and see how it's running so we're going to start with a free rinse we don't got a lot of water pressure here that's great what the heck man come on you could do it you could do it I think I can pee harder than that. What the heck, man? I don't got a kink in my line or anything. What is going on here? That's lovely, right? All right, well, this should be enough. I'll get some coil cleaner. So we're just gonna do a pre-rinse real quick, and then we'll get some foaming coil cleaner on there, and we'll see what that does for us. What the heck, man? This is ridiculous. It's ridiculously bad water pressure. So uh, they don't, people always ask me, you know, where do I get water on all my roofs? 
This is a restaurant. It's not a big restaurant, so I actually have to drop it over the side of the building. They got a hose bib down on the back dock. Yeah, if this was coming through better, you'd be able to see, but it's pretty dirty. But yeah, we'll get it on there. Since this is a tube and fin condenser, we're gonna go full strength. Got the Viper Venom Pack, the blue cleaner. Okay, uh, a lot of people keep asking me, you don't fill this with water. You just put a tiny bit of cleaner, set it on A if you're using their coil gun. Okay, this is a special coil gun. The settings are a little bit backwards from another one, but it's specifically designed to have the proper concentrations for their cleaners. So you can use other coil cleaners, but it's not gonna accurately mix the, the cleaner, basically. So um, yeah, we're gonna slap this guy on there, but yeah, you don't put any water in there. You just put the cleaner and you let the gun do the work, so. Doesn't look like a huge rainstorm, but I got a rainstorm coming. It's just a thumbner or a summertime monsoon. It's been coming from the Coachella Valleys that way. I'm out in the Inland Empire, Riverside, California, so Coachella Valley is about 70 miles that way. It looks like the thunderstorm's coming from there. It looks like it's raining over there, but not too bad, so. It's nice and sunny over there, so. It's actually a nice night, but okay, let's get this guy cleaned up so I can go home. So I got plenty of cleaner on there. It's been sitting for about two minutes. We're gonna go ahead and rinse it, and we're just gonna slowly rinse it, and. Watch all the goodness come out of this guy. So they don't do routine maintenances here. So even though we got low water pressure, you know another thing too, I need to run downstairs because this is hot water. So I wonder if I change it to cold water because they do have a, a selector dial on it. So if I change it to cold water, I wonder if I'll get higher pressure. Um, sometimes these restaurants do some funky stuff. But yeah, it's coming out, look at, I mean, yeah, it's coming out nice and dirty. Nice and dirty. All right, well, we're gonna finish rinsing this guy off, and then I'm gonna run down and turn on the cold water because I gotta rinse all this old cleaner off and everything, the roof. We don't want it sitting up there. There we go. That's better. Yeah, there's something wrong with their setup down there. For some reason, I can't turn it off hot, but I turned it the opposite direction, and it gave me a lot more pressure, so. Much better. And all that gunk out of there. But yeah, look at all this stuff coming out, so. She's nice and dirty for sure. This guy's been running for a little bit. Um, pressure's, you know, doing pretty darn good. 85 degrees outside. It's only got 10 degrees over ambient right now, but it's also still kind of wet, so we gotta give it some time. This is gonna get us through the night. We're running a clear sight glass. That's good. Suction line's getting cooler. It's gonna take a little while because uh, it's kind of warm in that box. I'd say it's in the, the high 30s, low 40s. It's been down for a while. I told them, I was like, guys, this thing's been down for all day, if not since last night, I can tell. So we're gonna give it some time, let it run. I'm gonna come back uh, tomorrow and we're gonna change that pressure control, but this should get us through the night. Also something else, that saturation temperature on the low side was extremely low. So we will investigate that tomorrow, but I think we're gonna be fine for now. It's starting to cool off. We'll go downstairs, make sure the evaporator fan motors are running. It's already at about 11 degrees. It's 15 now that I'm holding it, but it was 11 degrees on the shelf. So they'll be fine for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. All right, we made it through the night. It is the next day. The box is completely down to temperature. Uh, the ice cream refroze, which is trash, but that's a whole nother story. Um, but uh, all right, we are gonna have to figure out, what we're gonna do is put a dual pressure control on this guy. We're gonna eliminate this low pressure. We're gonna eliminate that high pressure, but we have to figure out where to get it. Now, there is a Schrader under here, typically, but I'm not 100% sure. It's like 99.9% .9 sure there's a Schrader, but there's always that small percentage that there's not. So we typically aren't gonna unscrew these. We're just gonna cut the wires, rewire the unit. Ideally, I'm gonna shut this off. Ideally, I wanted to hook onto the uh, receiver and put a service tee, but you can see there's like no room there. That's kind of miserable because of that suction line. So we're kind of left with this high pressure port right here. Unfortunately, the Schraders in these usually melt because of the heat of the discharge. So we're gonna have to try to make that work. I don't know, it's gonna be tricky. I'm very surprised, but we were able to actually depress the Schrader and it worked. 
And for giggles, we went ahead and put a core removal tool on there and the Schrader actually came out. It's very rare that they come out when they're this close to the discharge. So we went ahead and replaced the Schrader with a new one. We're gonna use a swivel T right here, but we gotta get the dual pressure control installed. We disconnected the old one. We pumped the system down to about five PSI. We'll do a hot swap on this because there is no Schrader here. This is just the low side. We're gonna mount it probably somewhere in here and then uh, run new electrical over. I pulled the old electrical out. It's those two wires. We'll connect into that. We'll run an SO or SJ cord. This guy just gets cut to where it's not gonna do anything anymore. And then, uh, yeah, so it's a little you know, process. We gotta get the pressure control installed, hooked onto this side because there won't be a Schrader. This side will have a Schrader for troubleshooting purposes, right there. And yeah, so we gotta get that mounted first. And then we'll get into cleaning up all the wiring for the condenser fan motors. So we're tightening this guy on right now. So all that we did was loosen it, put our finger over the end, nylogged everything, right? We put nylog on all the mating surfaces of the flare nuts and everything. We already got this one swapped out um, and we're still in positive pressure. So we didn't introduce any oxygen or anything into the system, any air, non-condensables. Therefore, we don't have to change the dryers. Also yesterday, I didn't show it on camera. I did check the pressure drop and there's absolutely no pressure drop across this filter dryer, this suction line filter dryer. So there's nothing wrong with having a suction line filter dryer left in the system so long as you don't have a pressure drop. You just wanna keep checking that pressure drop. If you start to have a pressure drop, that can lead to oil lag issues uh, down in the evaporator and different things like that. But um, okay, so we're gonna tighten this all up, clean it up position the capillaries and then we'll lay a bead of silicone across them um, and then we'll get started on wiring in the electrical. And our system is now running so we've got a dual pressure control. We went ahead and put some silicone to kind of protect it from vibrating out, rubbing up against the sidewall. We set the low pressure cut in and cut out and we still need to check the high pressure cut out. We went ahead and got rid of all that electrical tape, cleaned it up, made it so that way we can test current. This motor's allowed to run 0.48. This motor's allowed to run point or 1.1. So this one right here is running 0.35. Nothing wrong with that. This one right here is running 0.82. So both of the motors are testing under current. So I don't see a reason that the motors could have caused it to go off on high pressure. So I really do think that just yesterday we hit 108 or so and um, the high pressure control had drifted and it just caused it a nuisance trip. That and the condenser was slightly dirty, but... So we changed it, we put a new pressure control on. We also put a new defrost clock on because it was kind of gummed up and wasn't moving very well. So we tried to clean up everything as much as possible. Um, now we're just gonna watch the box operate for a minute and uh, just start cleaning up our messes. This is always a fine line because this compressor can only operate at a certain pressure differential between low and high. And if the pressure differential becomes too much, the pressure relief inside the compressor will release, right? And release the pressure and make a trip on high current, okay? I set the pressure control to what looked like about 400. It actually cut out at about 390. So we adjusted it higher. Let's see where it cuts out now. So should be about 410, 415 is what we're looking for. There we go. We don't want it to cut out any higher than that, but the problem is, is you know, on a really hot day, it's plausible that it could be 118, 120 degrees on the roof. If you figure saturation temperature at a maximum is gonna be 30 degrees over ambient, 120, 30, 40, 50, that's 150 degrees saturation temperature, of which that pressure control is not set for that, but the compressor is going to go off on pressure relief somewhere in between there. So this is about as high as I can set it, about 415. We don't want to go on any higher. This isn't something you want to be doing all the time. You don't want to be on off, on off on high pressure because like I said, it'll release the internal pressure relief. But other than that, I think we're good. You know, uh, depending on the situation, there's times when I'll just put the fire out and then go back the next day. Sometimes I'm like so busy that 
you know, I don't have time to go back the next day. But in this situation, it, you know, I knew that I had time to come back the next morning. So I literally got the equipment up and running. But it's important that, you know, you don't just assume that a pressure control trips for no reason. You always want to investigate. There's always a possibility there was something else going on. But as best as I could tell, you know, other than if, I don't know if you guys caught it every once in a while when I shut off the equipment, the condenser fan motors would slow down at different speeds. Sometimes that can indicate a bearing failure in one of the motors, like how it will, you know, kind of free spin and then just all of a sudden just stop. One of them was slowing down a little bit slower than the other, faster than the other. But other than that, there's really nothing else. There was no high current situations in the condenser fan motors. The only thing I could think was that we had an extremely high temperature that day, 108, 109. And that pressure control was cutting out too early, right? So it's, you know, possible that the pressures in the system exceeded 400 PSI that day when we were hitting 109, 110 degrees. And, you know, it just wasn't set high enough. So went ahead, went back the next day, changed the pressure control. One thing I will say that I didn't catch on camera, this, the, when I went back the next day, I had another technician with me. And what I had him do, I actually left early. When you guys saw my last clip, I left. He stayed for about another hour because I went ahead and had him adjust the expansion valve. So before we adjusted the expansion valve, what we did was we made sure there was no pressure drop across the suction filter. I mentioned I did that. Uh, we also checked for a temperature drop across the liquid line filter dryer, nothing. Then we went downstairs. When we had it pumped down, I had him pop the strainer off the expansion valve because it was a removable strainer. Make sure the strainer wasn't dirty. It was not. So we went and put that back in, and then I had him adjust the expansion valve. So when he first got there, the evaporator superheat was about 20 degrees when it was at about 15 degrees um, box temperature. Now that's a little bit high to be adjusting the expansion valve. So we went a little conservative and we got the box to about five degrees box temperature. And then I had him set the superheat at about eight degrees evaporator superheat. He said that he had to adjust the expansion valve two and a half turns, bringing the, the stem and the expansion valve down two and a half full turns. And he was able to get it down which dropped our suction line temperature, uh, raised our saturation temperature, and the box was operating a little bit better. Because I was a little concerned that I never saw frost on the suction lines, even when the box was down to temperature. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? Well, we needed to adjust the expansion valve. Why the expansion valve was out of whack, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say whether it's been like that for a long time. Uh, I don't know, you know, so, but we made some adjustments, but you want to be very careful about adjusting superheat. Um, you don't want to do it till it's pretty much down to temperature. You want to make sure your charge is on point, um, and then just carefully adjust it nice and slow. So I had the other technician do that. Other than that, there was nothing else we could find wrong with the box. Um, you know, equipment's old, it's beat down. So we just told the customer to keep an eye on it and uh, that's it. I really appreciate you making it to the end as usual. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available on the website, hats, beanies, sweaters, all that good stuff. It's a great way to help support the channel. If you're interested in purchasing any tools, as I say all the time, definitely check out truetechtools.com. They have a great selection. They're great people over there. Um, I actually have an affiliate link set up with them. If you use my affiliate link, big picture, one word on checkout, you'll get an 8% discount on majority of the items they have available on their website. There's a few that you don't get them on, but majority of them you will. And then I get a small commission from that. So it's a great way if you're going to purchase any tools and you like their selection, buy them from them. They have really fast shipping. A lot of the times, um, if you exceed a minimum order, they'll give you free shipping. Like majority of the time that I order stuff, I get free shipping. So it's a pretty good deal. Uh, so if you're interested, use my offer code Big Picture. Uh, there's a couple other ways you can support the channel if you're interested in doing so. There's PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. Just look in the show notes of this video. There's links to all the different methods. And uh, But the easiest way, as I always say, to support the channel is simply watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. Anyways, I really appreciate you all. Thank you so very much, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?